Bill Carroll of Zinni 62 Sports Media, and going through the NFC North, we now come to one of the more interesting teams because, one, they have a very important role in determining the outcome of the entire NFL draft. Interesting team because we get to see the plan, right? People always talk about, uh, you know, trusting the process. And I think Brad Holmes truly has a process in place, and I think there's good reason to trust it and we'll see, obviously, the process being put into place this year. So, obviously, everyone knows about the, the trade that brought Jared Goff here and sent Matthew Stafford there, where, of course, he went to the Rams, where Brad Holmes previously had been, won a Super Bowl. They also have Tim Boyle, David Blau, and Steven Montez. Montez is either going to cut or on a practice squad. They were obviously only carry three quarterbacks. At the running back group, you know, they there's a lot to be figured out. Uh, I think they really have something, and I think they think they really have something, and they're probably right in DeAndre Swift, who I believe is on his way to being, you know, a, a young star. And, you know, the rest of their offense, you know, you have, you know, Jamal Williams, who came there via Green Bay. You have Craig Reynolds, right, who's a guy that I liked coming out. Small school guy, always liked small school guys uh, from Cutstown State. You have Jamal Jefferson and Godwin Ibuike. And then they do have a fullback, one of them on the roster, Jason Cabenda. Their receiver group, which some people were dumping on previously, is now looking pretty good, actually. Uh, they have DJ Chark, Josh Reynolds, and, of course, an emerging star in Amon Ross St. Brown. Now, in an ideal situation, he'd be your number two wide receiver. They don't really have a number one, but they have a number two, a number three, and a number four. Khalif Raymond is also sort of a number three type, they have, but very fast. They have Quintez Cephas, Trinity Benson and Jason McKinley, they're going to want to add at some point, perhaps someone early to this group who might be a true game breaker. Thus far, they don't have anyone that matches that description. Their left tackle is Taylor Decker, who's a, you know, top tier. They have Matt Nelson backing him up, uh, Jason Stenberg and Jonah Johnson at left guard, Frank Ragnow, who's a very good center, Evan Brown and Ryan McCollum. Ryan McCollum came there via Houston. They have Vatai Halapulavati at uh, right guard, Tommy Kramer backing him up, Panay Sewell, obviously, who's been talked about quite a bit. A lot of people were mocking him, including myself, for a long time to, um, to Cincinnati. And then, like many people, I, at the last moment, I sort of switched it uh, to where he ended up, which, of course, is here. And they have Dan Skipper, maybe the tallest offensive lineman, at least for the moment. Now we have See what happens with Daniel uh, Palele, but the tallest offensive lineman in the league right now. And then you come to a very nice tight end group with, of course, TJ Hawkinson at the head of the table. They have Garrett Griffin, uh, Brock Wright, Jared Pickney, and Shane Zilska. Probably carry three out of that group. Maybe one stands on the Packers squad. Matt Sokol and uh, Hunter Bryant. So I think maybe Bryant, uh, Griffin, and Hawkinson. And maybe, like I said, it's a fight uh, to see if one of those other guys makes it. And on defense, obviously, speaking of, of the, the uh, Los Angeles Rams, you have Michael Brockers. You also have Olympia McNeil, Levi Enzarique, Charles Harris, Alex Anzalone, former, former Saint. Also, you have uh, Amari Oarie, Deshaun Elliott, Tracy Walker III, Jeremy Jacobs, and Jeff Okuda. I truly believe they want to add to their secondary as well. I wouldn't be shocked if they took both a safety and a corner at some point in this draft. And in terms of backups, you have Mike Hughes, Will Harris, C.J. Moore, if, uh, Ifati Milifanwu, A.J. Parker, Bobby Price. Behold the green and gold. Also, uh, Savion Smith, Jalen Elliott, uh, Brady Breeze, and Juju Hughes. Also amongst the, and Will Harris amongst the safeties. And then amongst... Uh, the um, and Mark Gilbert also is a guy I think we'll see some nickel uh, time at nickel and as well as Parnell Motley who I really liked coming out of Oklahoma then backing up at the linebackers you have people like Sean Dion Hamilton who might find his way eventually into the you know starting role Jared Davis they once had very high hopes for also you know back again uh, Chris Board uh, Anthony Pittman uh, Tavante Tackett who was very quick very athletic from Marshall I liked him coming out Josh Woods uh, Julian Okwara, Rashad Berry, Jesse Lemagne, who I had high hopes for coming out as well. Eric Banks, Bruce Hector, um, Deshaun Cornell, Austin Bryant, 
and uh, Jason Pinnacy, sorry, John Pinnacy, are amongst the guys they have backing up on their D-line and linebacker group. Jack Fox is one of the best punters in the league. They will not be drafting a punter. Uh, Riley Peters, uh, yeah, Riley Patterson, sorry, and uh, Aldrich uh, Rosas uh, will be part of the competition there. Uh, Scott Daly, long snapper, and don't see an issue there. Uh, and Fox also holds uh, from Rice. But uh, getting into the the uh, resources they have to bring to bear. Now, they have some dead cap, but their dead cap is sort of all in one place, right? Um, they don't have a lot of dead cap and it's not spread out. They have just four players. Uh, Trey Flowers is $12,112,376 of dead cap. Jamie Collins is $633,334 in dead cap. And that's most of it right there because they only have $20,278,162 in dead cap. Then Tyra Williams is $1 million. And uh, uh, Tavai Jahani is $758,449. So that means they have $18,246,360 to work with. They may still sign some second tier or third tier guys late in the free agency period, but obviously they're devoting most of what they have left to the draft. And let's talk about the draft. Now, they have pick one, uh, not pick one, but the first pick they have is pick two, right? So they have the second pick overall in the first round. And we've heard everything, right? Uh, people are now sending Trayvon Walker towards that pick, Thibodeau, Hutchinson, um, one of the top offensive linemen, possibly Guanu. You'll hear people now mocking Malik Willis. I don't think they go quarterback early. I think they like uh, Goff way more than I think most people realize. And I think they realize they're not one player away anyway. So if they do decide to give up on golf, it's not this year. I think golf gets at least one more year. And plus, it's a, a deeper quarterback group next year. Additionally, I think they think they have other needs. I think they might address the pass rush, which means it could be either Thibodeau or Hutchinson. Uh, if they trade down, and I, I assure you they're open to the idea of trading down, it could be a corner. It could be an offensive lineman. It could be a bunch of things, right? They could use everything. I mean, you don't get to be picking this early if you don't need a lot of things. But the arrows point in the right direction. And they also have pick through two that came, you know, in the Stafford deal from the Rams. I think that that could be definitely U.S. safety. It could be anybody like Jason. It could be Jalen Petrie. It could be Jaquan Brisker. Uh, I mean, any of the safeties, really. I mean, the only one who's, you know, essentially not supposed to be there and he might be there is Hamilton. Uh, Kyle Hamilton might not go as early as people think, though. He probably goes before 32. And last but not least, I could see them even going with a center. It's not out of the realm of possibility like Tyler Lindebaum if he makes it there. Then they come right back on the clock uh, for pick number 34, second pick of the, of the uh, third round, sorry, second round. That's where I think they go wide receiver. I could see it being Christian Watson. Uh, I could see it even being someone like Khalil Shakur, Sky Moore. I mean, there's so many good receivers in this class, and a lot of them are going to be there for them uh, if – a guy like, you know, there's a lot of receivers. Uh, I could, I mean, and people are assuming that some of these guys are going to go early that I don't think will go as early as people think. Uh, so I think a number of receivers could make it to them. Uh, I think they could go with almost any of them. And if they do end up going defense, guys like Nick Benito, uh, once again, the aforementioned Brisker, all are, are in consideration there. The pick 66, you know, it gets a little more interesting. Um, I believe that amongst the players they're likely to consider when you get, you know, a little deeper into the draft, if Rasheed Walker's there, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he if he gets picked. Uh, they might take a corner. You know, once again, Elante Taylor, uh, any of those guys in sort of that third tier. Uh, if Tyler Smith is still there, though he seems to be moving up, as they say, I could see them going with a guy like D'Angelo Malone if they go pass rusher. Um, if they do go receiver there, it could be a guy like Jalen Tolbert. If they go offensive line, it could be a guy like uh, Jamari Sawyer, if he's still there, or Abraham Lucas. Uh, if they go receiver slash return specialist, a guy like Wandale Robinson, uh, another corner like Martin uh, Emerson or Tariq Woolen, if he's still there. If Tariq Woolen's there, that would, I mean, their team, once again, looking at the future. Even linebacker, if a guy like Troy Anderson or Chad Moma's there. And then moving on, I think that if they're looking at picks for pick 97, uh, one of their compensatory picks in the third, once again, a lot of the names that I mentioned who could potentially could slide. Now, obviously, you know, we're talking about ifs when we're talking at this point. If they did decide to go developmental quarterback, which they probably won't, but if they did, 
this is where they might consider, you know, even if, say, Desmond Ritter makes it there. A lot of people think Desmond Ritter is going to go in the first. That seems a little rich for me. But if he makes it there, I, I, I don't think they'd be – it wouldn't be a shock to me. Could they even take a running back? Sure. I think they probably will wait. But I could see them definitely going after, you know, players along the line of Jacoby Durant amongst defensive backs. I wouldn't be shocked if they took a look at, you know, some of the the next tier of offensive line players. Um, I think that you can never have too many good or developing offensive linemen. And, and last but not least, amongst guys who might make it there, if Luke Fortner makes it there, I think he'd be in consideration. If a pass rusher like Dominic Robinson is there, I think he'd be in, in consideration. Uh, Cole Strange, I'm pretty sure they'd consider. If Colby Bryant's still there, though I imagine he might well be gone. But if he isn't, I think you'd have to consider him. And then moving on, I think that looking at their next selection, uh, pick 177, now it gets interesting, right? Um, is a guy like Spencer Buford still there? Perhaps not. Uh, but he'd be a really interesting developmental piece at the, uh, you know, at the at the tackle position. Also, I think they consider, you know, some of the players that slide for whatever reason. Uh, but here's some of the guys that I would be targeting at 177. Assuming, and that's a lot of assuming to be made there, but assuming that a guy like, if they did want to go running back, see if a Tyler, guy like Tyler Alger is still there. Maybe not, but maybe. Um, if linebacker Mike Rose is there, I think he'd be in consideration. Uh, Donovan West, uh, a guy like Saquandre White, uh, Dara Russell, uh, I think he'd be in consideration. And, you know, last but not least, I wouldn't be shocked if they took went into your defensive line with a guy like Eric Russell from Missouri State, a powerhouse of a man uh, who I, some teams I think might be a little higher on than others, but because of level competition and age, he's an older prospect, he could possibly make it to them there. And then uh, rounding up the last couple of picks for Detroit, players that I think will be in consideration at pick 181 and 217. So a lot of people sort of uh, stop paying attention. I would urge you to keep paying attention, particularly in this particular draft class, keep paying attention even very deep into the later rounds because there will be good players who will still be there on the board. Is it possible that, a, you know, they don't need a tight end, but if a guy like Charlie Kohler is still there, is he in consideration? If perhaps uh, they do, don't go running back early, but they go running back late, is a guy like Kyron Williams still there? Is a receiver like Tyrese Freifogel there? Is a pass rusher like Michael Clemens from Texas A&M, uh, who's sort of raw but interesting, still there? A linebacker slash safety, a, a hybrid guy, which is becoming more popular. A guy like Sterling Weatherford could be in consideration. If they go wide receiver, is Velas Jones. If they go late at wide receiver, is Velas Jones there? If somehow, Damari Mathis, I know I keep bringing him up because I'm such a big fan, but if he's still there, that's the kind of play you snap up. If they go running back, a guy like Ty Chandler. Um, you know, Tennessee by way of Carolina uh, is still there. All players, I think, there'll be consideration. And last but not least, I'll give you a center slash guard. For Mercer, Jason Poe is a terrific athlete. And people always talk about, you know, the ball of clay or whatever he is. But he's a terrific prospect with a lot of upside. And some teams even worked him out at fullback. He's such a good athlete. Last but not least, their final pick, pick 217, commensurate pick, pick 39 in the sixth round. Now, once again... Uh, I know some teams are willing to just take a shot on players with a lot of raw, you know, ability and maybe haven't done much. But if, if you're thinking running back, maybe a guy like Zonovan Knight, uh, move tight end like uh, Cal Katera. Uh, also, other players, I think maybe uh, Alex Wright from UAB, who, who he might be gone by that point. He's starting to apparently sort of gaining in some people's uh, estimation. Uh, if they go wide receiver, guys like Samari Toure, Maybe a linebacker like Malcolm Rodriguez, who I'm a big fan of. If he makes it there, jeez, you got to go for that. Uh, pass rusher like Jeffrey Gunter um, from Coastal Carolina. If he makes it there, that'd be a guy you'd have to be in consideration. And then last but not least, a corner like Daryl uh, Baker Jr. from Georgia Southern. And I'll give you a couple more guys. Uh, guard, Justin Schaefer from Georgia, if he makes it there. Or Zachary Thomas from San Diego State. are all players that should very much be in consideration with that pick. I truly believe that the arrow is pointed in the right direction uh, for the Lions. The Lions 
are obviously a team that's thinking, you know, a year or two down the road, but this should be a very big part of that building block for them. 